And it is back to school week for Rhode Island's largest school district, and we've learned Providence teachers will be playing a bigger role in how the district handles key decisions. Eyewitness News reporter Andrew Adamson is covering schools now with the Providence Mobile Newsroom. It's the start of a new era for Providence Public Schools. I talked to Superintendent Susan Lucy to find out what's next for the district at today's convocation. As the summer hours tick away, a brand new school year is almost here, and some Providence school teachers like Patricia Maya and Margaret Sabo can hardly contain their excitement. I love the first day of school. I'm already picking out my outfit, <laughs> just like the kids. Seeing all the new faces and seeing all the, the children, my, my kids from last year, how tall they've grown, and you know, it's a new start. New this year, teachers like Maya and Sabo will have more decision-making power than ever, according to Providence School Superintendent Susan Lucy. It's part of an initiative being implemented by the district and Mayor Angel Tavares. It's really so that we have professionals working together and giving their utmost on behalf of students and so that decision-making is taking place on behalf of students to the closest, at the closest level to where they are. Teachers at the schools know best what's going on at each each school and so the more power that we can have in terms of uh, each school I think the better. Officials announced the new initiative during the Providence Schools Convocation at the Dunkin Donuts Center, the first of its kind in many years. It's really important that everyone come together and unite in a common focus and in a big system like this it's very hard to get everyone together so when better than uh, opening day. Lucy says the initiative will be implemented slowly over time. Providence schools start their new year on Wednesday. We'll have complete back to school coverage throughout the rest of the week. With the Providence Mobile Newsroom, Andrew Adamson, Eyewitness News.